We're very happy to have today um, Ambassador Peter Borian, uh, who is EU, EU Special Representative to Central Asia, um, to speak about the European Union and Central Asia, a new partnership in action. Um, I was telling uh, Ambassador Borian before we began that we very much welcome his presence here as a way of raising consci consciousness in public opinion here on this um, what might seem uh, a rather exotic uh, area, but is a very important area uh, geostrategically and otherwise. Um, he is coming after um, the uh, Union has adopted a position um, on the question on the basis of a joint uh, communication of the Council and the Commission on EU Central Asia, um, in which uh, I cite uh, one of the um, statements in the joint communication. Uh, it says that uh, the area is an increasingly strategic lo location at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, uh, with a young population, high literacy rates, and abundant natural resources, um, which has significant growth and development potential. Um, I think that, in a nutshell, uh, describes the potential and the importance of this area. Um, there are lots of other considerations which no doubt uh, Ambassador Burian will go into in making his presentation. Uh, his presentation will be on the record. Uh, the, he will speak for maybe about 20 minutes. Yes, I will try. Uh, questions and comments afterwards will be uh, off the record uh, under Europe House rules. Uh, you may cite what is what is said here, but not the person or the place uh, where it is said. Ambassador Burian. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you for your nice words of welcome. And uh, for me, it's really a pleasure to be in Dublin and discuss Central Asia. Um, here, I wanted to once again thank the Institute for International and European Affairs for uh, convening uh, this discussion uh, and I agree that we cannot have a better timing for this discussion since we just a uh, few days ago adopted uh, Council conclusions endorsing uh, the new strategy for uh, Central Asia and I'm pleased to know <coughs> that the uh, attention and interest uh, in the region of our member states uh, is uh, growing uh, significantly. It has been growing for um, uh, more than four years since uh, a very active Latvian presidency which uh, brought uh, Central Asia back to our radar screen, but also it's growing because of uh, many important things uh, and developments happening uh, in the region. And I have to uh, say that uh, uh, the uh, Central Asian region is not uh, really in focus of uh, our attention because of any kind of crisis or conflict, but on the contrary, because of uh, uh, positive uh, developments in the region. And I also believe that uh, these positive developments can be also uh, attributed and credited also to EU's long-term support and investment into the sustainable uh, development of the region and support for regional cooperation as factors of security and stability. Uh, in particular, as I mentioned, in these past couple of years, Central Asia has gone uh, through significant changes which uh, uh, have brought the region uh, closer than ever uh, to Europe and have uh, increased uh, the geostrategic significance of the region for us, for the European Union. I, and I would mention a couple of those uh, positive uh, uh, dynamics uh, that we see in Central Asia and that have opened uh, up new opportunities for taking uh, the EU Central Asia uh, uh, partnership and relationship forward to a qualitatively uh, new level. First of all, it's reform and modernization processes in the region, in particular, I would say, in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Of course, Kazakhstan has been involved in those reform processes under 100 Steps uh, program for uh, several years already. And those uh, reform processes have triggered uh, calls also for uh, political recognition and support from the EU. 
And of course, while uh, Central Asians will need to decide their own ways uh, of working uh, together, there is also a new momentum in regional cooperation illustrated by the first uh, informal uh, consultative summit of Central Asian leaders uh, in March 2018 in Astana and hopefully the uh, uh, next summit will be organized this year uh, in uh, Tashkent. It was slightly postponed because of the elections in uh, Astana in Nur Sultan and uh, I hope that really uh, also these summits are showing uh, the understanding of uh, Central Asian uh, countries that in spite of their uh, different uh, uh, interests, different ambitions, different uh, also models of uh, building their statehoods, uh, the regional cooperation is a must and uh, uh, is contributing to solutions to uh, common uh, challenges. And also I would mention a couple of uh, geo-strategic, uh, geopolitical uh, developments. Uh, um, we are not hiding that also our interest uh, to the region has increased, uh, also thanks to uh, more engagement of China through its Belt and Road Initiative. But we also uh, understood that the uh, European Union has to come with its own concept in promoting Euro-Asian connectivity. And uh, as you know, uh, just uh, in September 2018, we uh, adopted our own uh, strategy on connected, uh, connecting Europe and Asia, actually presenting our uh, views and approaches to uh, a sustainable uh, way of connecting uh, Europe and Asia. And it was met with uh, quite a, uh, a strong interest, not only uh, by our partners, but also uh, by China, where we also established uh, uh, a EU-China connectivity uh, platform for discussing uh, various uh, projects uh, together. But also uh, we are using this platform for encouraging uh, China to behave in a more sustainable uh, manner and more open manner when uh, pursuing a Belt and Road Initiative. But once again, it's a process and we hope that uh, our 25 years experience from uh, building connectivity in our single market and with our neighborhood has already accumulated a lot of experience, but also uh, we are uh, one of the strongest uh, source of financing uh, for those projects. So I believe uh, here uh, we can also build uh, uh, something we can call a partnership for sustainable uh, connectivity with uh, Central Asia as part of uh, our strategy. And also uh, we are quite pleased to know, uh, uh, note uh, that uh, uh, Central Asians are quite eager uh, to take their own responsibility for certain things happening in the region, including security, including fight against uh, uh, radicalization leading to violent extremism, including um, also <coughs> contribution to hopefully uh, helping Afghanistan to stabilize and find uh, the solution for its uh, protracted uh, uh, conflict. And you see also a very uh, strong initiative of Kazakhstan, uh, bringing up uh, the topic of regional security, including Afghanistan, to the program of the Security Council. You see uh, initiatives of uh, Uzbekistan uh, presented in Samarkand, in Tashkent conference, and this also creates uh, a new kind of level of cooperation, not only uh, working and uh, uh, helping uh, Central Asian countries uh, uh, in their sustainable development, but working together in addressing uh, many important regional and uh, also global uh, challenges, including the impact of climate change and uh, many um, other, other things. But I do not want to sound uh, complacent. Uh, we clearly see also many uh, outstanding challenges in the region. Uh, uh, these are connected or not connected also with the, the challenges I mentioned. We sh see uh, shrinking space for civil society, uh, sometimes uh, uh, 
lack of respect for basic freedoms, including freedom of expression or assembly, and sometimes quite heavy-handed uh, approaches of uh, law enforcement um, services, even against uh, peaceful uh, demonstrators. I, I think really um, the, the threats which, uh, which uh, the region and individual countries are facing, uh, and we are uh, uh, out loud saying it, should not be uh, uh, a reason why you should slow down uh, the process of, uh, of reforms or slow, slowing down, opening up the societies uh, or uh, providing more freedoms to uh, 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 their citizens. On the contrary, I think if you have this kind of heavy-handed approaches, sometimes you trigger even more negative rea uh, uh, reactions. And uh, the EU, within our platforms for bilateral and regional dialogues, we have uh, dialogues on human rights. Uh, we have also platform for rule of law cooperation. We are trying to be very open and also sharing our experience. Uh, uh, how these elements were so important for us, let's say four countries of Central and Eastern Europe, in our transformation uh, processes. So I think uh, uh, this is also something which represents certain change. We are not uh, trying to teach our partners, but we are uh, trying to actually, by uh, experience sharing, to, to demonstrate a practical value of those uh, uh, challenges uh, these countries are uh, facing. Over the lunch we had uh, uh, quite an interesting uh, discussion about the, the experience, uh, uh, actually, the history of Central Asian countries. 25 years, it's nothing in the history, but the progress is enormous. But once again, we should not forget that uh, there are many important uh, challenges, including those which I mentioned, neighboring uh, Afghanistan, growing potential for radicalization, but also that there are actually uh, a million of young people entering the labor market every year. Can you imagine uh, uh, this kind of labor force uh, entering the labor market every year? Out of it, probably this year is the, the most kind of uh, fertile in Uzbekistan. It's 800 800,000 uh, young people entering the labor market. So it's both a blessing, but it is also a challenge when uh, these young people are not provided uh, job opportunities, then they can be lured by radicals, by extremists recruited, but also they can become uh, a source of uh, irregular migration. So far, Russia is absorbing a big portion of this labor migration, but uh, I uh, see that uh, the absorption capacity of Russia uh, is uh, reaching or has reached also the, uh, the limit. It was quite interesting that uh, uh, last week I visited Russia. Uh, I met uh, with uh, Deputy Minister Karasin and he said uh, we have four million labor uh, migrants. But uh, he was quite positive about the contribution of uh, these labor migrants uh, to the economic development, but also that uh, actually those labor migrant, uh, migrants are uh, um, uh, transferring money, uh, remittances uh, to uh, the, uh, their own uh, countries uh, uh, and supporting, uh, in a way, economic development. But I, I think there could be also a better way how to, how to uh, uh, secure this uh, uh, wonderful uh, young potential by creating job opportunities inside of their countries and so on. And certainly this is one of our ambitions to contribute to that uh, through, um, <coughs> through uh, certain uh, priorities which are reflected in our strategy. Now very briefly about the strategy and then I would be very much eager to listen to your comments and questions. The strategy uh, um, which was adopted um, uh, on 17th of June, I believe was done in the most uh, transparent <coughs> manner. Uh, we um, were involved in a large consultation process uh, with our partners in Central Asia over uh, two years uh, involving governments, civil society, private sector, but also our member states and uh, private sector. We wanted to be sure that uh, 
the picture we have about the needs, uh, expectations uh, and priorities of our partners, about uh, expectations of our member states are correctly uh, and precisely reflected in the strategy. Uh, I do not want to claim that we have a perfect strategy, but uh, certainly uh, according to first reactions from member states, from uh, the region, um, the strategy is uh, appreciated as uh, less ambitious, uh, ambitious and more realistic, better focused on the needs of our, um, our partners in the region and better reflecting and mobilizing our sources and resources for implementing uh, the strategy. Of course, the strategy will be then uh, translated into the future programming. Uh, actually, we are starting the preparation uh, of a, a new budget uh, or new multi-annual indicative program for 21-27, where the strategy will be a very important <coughs> uh, political guidance for allocating uh, the money. I'm not promising uh, that we'll uh, uh, allocate uh, much more money, uh, but certainly the commitment of uh, the EU to increase the financing of uh, foreign action uh, in the next budget by 30% is an encouraging signal. I think also with the current level of allocations we have allocated for the previous um, uh, planning period um, uh, more than uh, 1.2 billion uh, euros uh, for uh, various bilateral and regional uh, projects and programs in uh, those key areas, uh, rule of law, uh, of, uh, education, education is the most significant program, but also supporting more uh, sustainable management of uh, natural resources and also we are looking to the same priorities, but adding more focus also on economic aspects, uh, including building ground or rules-based space for uh, uh, a more attractive uh, investment environment for uh, those connectivity projects to be uh, achievable and environmentally also sustainable. So we are uh, now also based on uh, the uh, demand from our partners for a more ambitious uh, economic presence of uh, the EU in the region, strengthening um, mechanisms for supporting investments, including investment for facility for Central Asia, which is a source <coughs> of grants, uh, which could be combined with uh, loans um, of different uh, financial institutions. We are very much encouraging uh, uh, EIB uh, to uh, increase the activities in the region also because of uh, these emerging opportunities. Currently EIB is uh, falling behind its expectations and potential as the biggest investment bank but we hope that also by improving uh, and um, uh, creating better conditions for investments and their production, uh, protection, uh, the interest uh, of uh, EIB, EBRD will be only growing. But once again, uh, we uh, believe that uh, certain homework should be done also by our partners in uh, those areas, fighting corruption, good governance, uh, uh, access to justice, and uh, these are uh, key elements of uh, the improved environment. And uh, when I uh, am discussing uh, these elements also uh, of connectivity with our Chinese partners, they clearly recognize the importance of fighting corruption uh, and uh, rule of law as uh, also important elements for viability of uh, their Belt and Road Initiative uh, program. So I believe we have certain convergence of uh, views uh, also in this area and once again uh, we hope to uh, work uh, in promoting a sustainable way of uh, uh, connectivity, addressing also issues like uh, unsustainable uh, debt or poor quality of uh, projects. So, I guess I, I spoke a lot, but I uh, haven't mentioned actually the, the key uh, two priorities of the strategy, or three, uh, if you wish, uh, but you can uh, find the strategy is accessible, including also uh, council conclusions uh, on our website. 
So our strategy is divided into two priorities, uh, uh, supporting and building partnership for resilience. It's very much connected with uh, <coughs> something uh, which I, I mentioned in the beginning, uh, these enormous uh, challenges and pressures uh, our partners are finding themselves because of the climate change, because of uh, uh, a lack of connectivity. And uh, uh, I, I think um, uh, our kind of primary goal is to, to help uh, uh, in strengthening capacities of our uh, partners in Central Asia in absorbing and resisting and responding to uh, these external and internal uh, shocks again through education, through uh, job creation, through reforms. And second uh, very important uh, priority is very much connected also with the first one but also with the more economic focus is the partnership for resilience where we also, uh, as I mentioned, will be very much focused on supporting private sector development, improvement of uh, investment climate, uh, business environment, uh, job creation and uh, also uh, creating uh, better conditions for sustainable uh, connectivity. Once again, these priorities will be uh, translated into our programs, but uh, probably uh, since I spoke for too long already, I would stop here and uh, open up <coughs> for your uh, questions or comments if uh, any.